Ebenezer Ministries online worship experience. We've made it to spring. And brothers and sisters, rather you were one of the thousands who came into the sanctuary and witnessed the power of God, or you are a new listener online, we welcome you into the service. God bless. Good morning. I'll be reading your scripture today, coming out of the New King James Version, out of the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. And it reads, This book, of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I have read Joshua 1, 8 through 9. Let the reading be a blessing to the hearer and the doer of his word. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We have the victory. into the upper room and there that it was revealed that uh, that betrayal would be a part of the process to get Jesus to Calvary but betrayal also would help him to be resurrected come Sunday morning and that night he took the bread and he offered bread and he blessed it and he prayed over it and he broke it and he said this is my body that will be shed out on Calvary he says eat eat ye all of it And likewise, he took the cup, lifts it. He says, this is my blood that will be shed out on Calvary. He tells them this is for the shedding of blood. We should, we should pray before we take this because it gives us a second opportunity to, to re-examine ourselves, to allow the Lord to go within us and see what is not like him so that we can become more like him. So if you would bow your heads with us. God, our Father, we tell you thank you. We tell you thank you for your blood that was shed out on Calvary. That despite what I have done in my past, where I am in my present, and what I may even have spoken over my future, your blood, 
it cancels out anything. It can break every chain, God. And so we pray now that you would search us, Lord God, and when you find something that might not be like you, we ask that you would take it out so that we might be closer to thee. It's in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus we pray. Amen. And he lifted a cup and he said, drink, drink y'all of it. After which they went unto the Mount of Olives and they sung songs and they sung hymns unto God. Amen.
of you are able to watch this broadcast, we thank God for you. If it's your first time being with us, let us know who you are. Let us know where you're from. Uh, we pray that this will not uh, be your last time being with us. Amen. Uh, for the past couple of weeks here, we have been talking about, uh, uh, been talking about, I'm working on me, uh, trying to, uh, thank you, God bless your soul, God bless you, just set that down a little bit, yeah, God bless you, um, we've been working on me trying to invest in self, uh, trying to invest in the, the spirit man, wanting to uh, truly develop, uh, develop the spirit man. Understanding that God has given us resources, He's given us resources in to uh, to enable us to be able to do whatever it is that we need to do, uh, whether it is uh, making it to an expected end, whether it is uh, saving grace, whether it is salvation, uh, whatever it is, God wants you to be able to get to that expected end. Amen. So here it is: uh, the first resource that we have. Uh, is your faith, uh, your faith, your faith. It is by faith uh, that when Abraham and Sarah wanted to conceive uh, and have a child in their old age, it was by faith uh, that God was able to give them that boy child. Uh, it was by faith that when, that when you began to read uh, backwards uh, through the chapter, uh, through chapter five of Mark, uh, that you began to see how God, how Jesus, uh, by faith, he wakes up a, a dead child. But prior to, he heals a woman that had nothing. Uh, he heals her of her infirmities, and he tells her, it is by your faith that you have been made whole. And then prior to that, and then prior to that event, you find a man that had been sleeping amongst the tombs, and when he saw Jesus, it was by his faith that he had been made whole. Uh, it was the faith in God that scared the demons that made the man come down from the mountaintop, fall down on his knees and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. It's by faith that you are going to be able to go to sleep tonight and not just go to sleep but have a good night's rest. It's by faith that you are going to be able to deal with the anxieties of life. It is by faith that God can take you from that God can take you from a negative then take you and take you into a positive. It is by faith that God can take negative and positive, bring them together and make them both work on your behalf. Uh, God, it's by faith. It's according to your faith. Now hear me, hear me now, hear me now, hear me now because we got to talk about this thing. We got to talk about this thing because it's not a by your mama's faith. And it's not by your sister's faith. And it's not by your brother's faith. No, and, and let me tell you something. God will bless those that are in need and don't have faith for themselves. Because if you look at the paralytic man in Mark chapter 4, the Bible begins to tell us uh, that, that, that there were four men that while everybody was running to Jesus, they were running from Jesus to go help somebody else. And, and one of the problems, and, 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 and let's, just be, let's just be honest about this thing about church. Sometimes one of the main problems in church is everybody's worried about self. Everybody's worried about I. And there's nobody that is worried about the paralytic man. And the community, and, and, and clearly, 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 it's clearly evident, at least to me anyway, that in that chapter, in, Mark, in, that, in, in that passage in Mark chapter 4 with the paralytic man, that the community, our community, the Flint Burton area, is that paralytic man. And we, the church, are the four friends. And it is our responsibility to get this community to get them to Jesus. And we can't be so consumed in our own trouble, in our own issue, that we forget about the paralytic man. We can't be so concerned about what goes on inside of these walls that we forget that there is a paralytic man that needs a deliverance, that needs a manifestation just like you do. And if you're going to work on self, I think that we should come to the conclusion that if we're going to work on self, if we're going to be more like Christ, if we're going to be uh, better individuals, 
that maybe we should learn to help someone else carry their burden, lighten their load. Understanding that though you might have it bad, there's somebody that has it much worse. I, I think it was Walter Hawkins that said you ought to be grateful because there's someone else that would love to be in your shoes. You ought to be grateful. I promise you, I promise you, there, there, there's, someone, there's someone in the cemetery that still wish they was in the hospital. There's somebody in the hospital that wish they was at home. There's somebody that's at home that wish they was at church. Your faith. It's not about, man, I'm going to take my little time for a minute here. It's not about, I think it was President, I think it was Kennedy. They said, you know, not what your country, what, not what you, what you can, what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. And it's not about what your faith can do for you, but what are you going to do for your faith? What are you going to do to strengthen it? We so busy sitting around. I'm waiting on the Lord. And if you raised like me, my sister's here with me this morning. We from down the way there. We from the, the church where they still, you know what I'm saying, we get down on the knee and we be like, now Lord, now Lord, now Lord. And you can do all of that and go through all of the moaning and groaning. And still not get anywhere because you don't have no faith. You can you can come to church and you can watch on live and 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 and, and, and I know I, I know I visited visited at least four churches this morning. Make no I'm gonna say six. I know I've been at least six churches this morning alone and have not have to and have not have to leave my apartment. I was right at, at home. But I can do all of that and had good church at every service. Got Sister Adams, I got shouted by every preacher at every service. But if I don't have no faith, it don't matter how much word I take in. If I have no faith, there's no ground to plant the seed that needs to bring forth a manifestation. So, so, so we got to have faith. You got to have faith. We got to have faith. And you can't wait until you need it to go get it. I told you, I told you, you know, I don't mind sharing my convictions. I used to drive this Cadillac Coupe de Ville, and, uh, and uh, the dashboard, the dashboard had gone out. And, you know, all that was digital, and you couldn't, uh, I, I didn't know how much gas I had. And, and after I got tired of running out of gas, I determined I can't wait until I need some gas to start talking about I'm going to head to the gas station. No, you got to keep at least, no, you got to keep at least 15 in the ashtray, you know, so just in case, just in case something happens. And you can't wait until the enemy is attempting to come in like a flood, until all hell is breaking loose, until you, you're at moons until you're in the hospital, until you hit the doctor's office with a bad report, until your child is in, is in a bad situation. You can't wait until trouble comes to talk about, I need to build up this spirit man. No, you have to have a relationship with him and build him up even when trials and tribulations are as calm as the seashores. Your faith, but not only... Do you have to have faith, but you got to have a Bible. You got to have a Bible. Now, this is a cell phone. This is a cell phone, ladies and gentlemen. This is a this is an iPad. Reverend 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 Sykes, zoom in on that if you can. But this is the word of God. Now, you know, and, I, and don't get me wrong, because I got, I have, I got Bible Gateway. I got the kids' venture Bible in here. I, I got them all. I got them all. But you can't substitute Bible Gateway for this word right here. 
And I told you, I told you all when I started this series, you know, I'm no social worker, I'm no therapist, I'm not a doctor. I'm, I'm, I'm still in school trying to, finish, trying to finish up a degree now, but uh, I know this word. And I can't, I can't tell you no strategies about nothing else, but I can tell you life principles are found within the word of God. So your Bible, it is that, it is the seed, it is not a book of rules, it's a bag of seed. It is a seed, it is a seed, According to, according to Luke, it is the, that it is a seed that needs to be planted. And, and, and hear me, in Matthew's, in Matthew's gospel of uh, Matthew chapter 6, it begins to tell us, uh, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me make sure I give this to you, because in Matthew chapter 6, it begins to tell us, uh, Matthew chapter 6, excuse me, Matthew chapter, yeah, Matthew chapter 6, uh, it begins to tell us that, uh, that, the, that we must, that God knows that we have a need. That our Father in heaven knows that we have need. He knows that every person in this place has a need. He knows that everyone that's watching has a need in their life. But since he knows that you have a need, he says in the second verse that we should seek ye first the kingdom of God. So we have to learn to find the kingdom way to, f to fulfill the need or the void that we have in our lives. And we do that by planting the word of God in our hearts. And it is out of our hearts that God brings forth an abundance or a manifestation of the need that you need. And it's not a, and I'll tell you, it's not an overnight process. You're not gonna, you know, you're not, you're not gonna be over here in the kingdom, in the world, in, in, in God's system for about five hours. And be like, well, Lord, this is what I need, this is what I need, this is what I need. And then on the sixth hour, you back in the world system. It don't work like that. You have to be found faithful and dedicated and committed to it if this is what you really want. We have to have, you, 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 have, to, you, have, to, you have to have your faith, you have to have a Bible. You need a faithful prayer life. You need a faithful prayer life. You have, I have to get to the rest of this. So let me just give the short version of this. You have to, you can't be in a relationship and y'all don't talk to each other. I mean, I know I'm single. I'm saying I'm single. I'm single. But uh, I, know, I got enough common sense to know that if I'm going to have a girlfriend, you have to spend some time on the phone. You got to talk to them. Because it's, in the, it's through talking to each other that you all, through communication, that you all get to know each other. That you, could, that you determine whether you can be with this person through the ups and downs, through the nice seasons of their life. That's how you figure it out. And the reason why you always flip, probably flipping out, pulling your hair out when trials and tribulations come, because there's, you think you have a relationship with them. And you just one night standing with him. And you're looking for his blessing. You're looking for this continuing covering from him. But you're not doing your part. And allow me to tell you again that a Christian is only as strong as he needs to be when he is on his knees. If you're going to have, if you're going to build yourself up, if you're going to look more like Jesus Christ. Because I told you last week, I, I'm kind of past trying to be a Christian I want to look like Jesus I want to talk like him I want to look like him I want to act like him I told you that, that, that there is a story of a man that, that sits at the gates of Calcutta and, and, and he leaves and he refines silver there at the gate and a, and a tourist came and he says how do you know when the heat when the silver has been refined he says I leave it on the heat until I can begin to see a clear reflection of myself. And, and I, didn't, I didn't really clearly explain that last week, but so let me clearly explain it this week and say, God, I need you to leave me on the heat until you begin to see a clear reflection of yourself in me. That means that if you have to leave me in some stuff, 
if you have to leave me in some trial, if you have to leave me in some tribulation, if you have to leave me in some persecution, because remember, everyone has a cross to carry. And that's what I'm going to close this, well, that's how I'm going to close this series out. We're going to talk about drawing closer to God, and we're going to deal with that. Every man has a cross to bear, that you have a cross, I have a cross. Jesus has already taken up his cross, and now that he has taken up his cross, it does not give you the opportunity to just walk off. But you too must suffer like Jesus suffered. And you too must go through like Jesus went through. So you got to have, you got to have a faithful prayer life. You got to build up momentum, understanding that it's not going to happen just because you have a hope for it to happen. You have to build up speed. You got to build up some momentum. Because momentum is, when a train builds up momentum, it has the ability to pretty much go through whatever is in front of it. But if you take a two-inch block and you put it on the track in front of that train, you fire up the engines, I'm talking about hotter than the blazes of hell. And the engine will not move because it has no momentum behind it. And you have to get in God. You have to spend time with God in order to build up some momentum. But not only is there momentum, but you have to, you have to come to this conclusion that you need discipline. And, he, and, 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 and this week God kind of led me to Philippians, to Philippians chapter uh, 2, Philippians chapter 2 verse uh, 12. And he says, uh, therefore my brethren, as you have always obeyed, has, have, have always obeyed me, so now, uh, not, long as, not long as I am present, but much more now, now that I am absent. Work out your own soul salvation with fear and trembling. And so, so here it is. Christ, in Christ we are, I think we need to understand that in Christ we are dead to sin. But we are alive to righteousness. It is, the, the, it is the power of the old self that we have to come to this conclusion that the power of the old self, it has been broken. And it's been broken and we are no longer held captive, but we are now free to live in obedience to the will of God. I mean, we got to come to this, we got to come to a place where we understand and we're willing to walk out what God has already predestined and preordained for us to be in our lives. But I'm, I'm, I, but I'm just going to tell the truth. It's better said than done. Because it's hard. It get hard sometimes. Y'all be real with me. It get hard. You trying to do right, live right. The more you live right, the more things fall apart. The more you try to be nicer to people, the nastier they start to get. The more joy and love you try to show on your job, the more ignorant they want to act on your job. One blues writer said, if it ain't one thing, it's another. They'll smile in your face all the time trying to take your place. Backstabbers, dog. Y'all know something about some OJs. Don't y'all act like y'all ain't never listened to the OJs. Child, y'all ain't been saved all y'all life. Y'all better act like y'all know. There has to be, there has to be, it, it's easy, it's easy, it's easy. It's so easy to just say, yeah, I'm, I'm going to just live for God. But there has to be a dedication to what you are saying. You have to be willing to walk out, to work out what God is working on the inside of you. Allow me to tell you, according, if we go back up to Philippians, if we go back up, uh, if we look, begin to look at Philippians chapter 2, it, it begins to tell us that God is, that God is working in us. And we really have to, 
work out what he is working on the inside. It's necessary to do what God is asking us to do. So we have to learn to be, uh, and this is, a, this is the point of the contemporary lesson for the day, we have to be committed to working out our own salvation. If you're going to look, if we're going to work on us, if we're going to work on me, if we're going to look more like Christ, we have to be dedicated, seriously committed to working out our own soul salvation. Not the person to the left or the right of us. Not your husband, not your wife, not your children. You have to first work on your own salvation when you get on an airplane. They tell you before that in, that in the case of an emergency, a, a mask will fall from the ceiling. Put your mask on first before you assist somebody else. And because if you pass out trying to help somebody else, you're really no good to us. And allow me to tell you, you can't tell me to sweep around my front door when you got tons of leaves around your front door. We have to work out our own soul salvation. We have to, we have to become serious. We have to really become serious about this thing. And, and if we go back up to Philippians chapter 1, uh, verse 6, it begins to tell us there in Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, he says, I am sure of this, that he who begun a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. So hear me. When you fall, and according to James, we all going to fall into diverse temptation. But just in case you fall, you have to understand that though there is nothing around your life that says, I'm under construction, I think you need to realize that God has begun a work in you. And he ain't done yet. It's not an overnight process. He's got to work out some stuff in you. It's some stuff he got to iron out. It's some stuff he got to press out. It's some stuff he got to beat out. It's some stuff he has to get out of you so that he can make you a better person. He told Jeremiah, he said, Jeremiah, go down there to the potter's house. And the whole process is, you know, he, he has to go to the potter's house, but the, but, the, but the man, the potter on the wheel, the potter, he has to get the dirt out of the ground. He makes clay of it. He has to beat out, beat out the air bubbles in the dirt and the clay. It's not, I just go outside, make some, get some dirt, make some mud, put it on the wheel, and just watch it spin around, and then put it in the oven, and, it, and it's just a masterpiece. It's a process to the masterpiece. And, and, and we're trying, we, wanna, we want to avoid the process, we just want to get to the, we just want to be the masterpiece. It's like, it's like what I heard Bishop Jake say, and I'll say it again. He says, uh, he said, you know, people oftentimes want to end up where I ended up. Mega church, Dallas, you know, mega church. I remember at one point I had visited, you know, I, was in, I lived in, in Shreveport, so we were about two and a half hours, maybe three hours from Dallas. And we had gone over one Sunday morning to the potter's house. And at the time, man, Bishop Jakes was talking about putting an exit off the highway. Do you hear me? Putting an exit off the highway for the potter's house, I said, well, praise the Lord. I ain't hating on him. I ain't hating on him because, you know, hey, if we ever need to keep on going, praise the Lord, maybe we have to get us an exit off of 69. Right into the parking lot. That would be so dope, Lord. That would be so dope. So, but he says, don't want to end up where I ended up if you're not willing to start out where I started. 
in the coal mines of West Virginia. Shoveling coal, being not just a preacher at his church. Y'all know Bishop Jakes' is organist? Play, playing the organ himself. Singing the songs, preaching the sermon, and counting the money. You can't end up where you where he ended up unless you're willing to go through the process, unless you're willing to walk in the footsteps of his shoes through every phase, through every situation, through every up, through every down, through every valley. There are, it's not just going to be, I just get to my destiny. Matter of fact, I'm going to do it again because I heard the Lord say do it. Walk with me again, Reverend Sites. There's a process to life. And this is our God-given destiny right here. This God-given destiny. And you'll think, and, you, and you'll be right here. You'll be sitting right here. You know, in church, servant. Because this is a good servant seat. This is, look like a good servant seat. If, you, if I was an armor bearer, I'd want to sit right here. Because bishop right there, I can see everything. I can pretty much see everything. I have somebody sitting over there. If I was just, if I was an armor bearer again, I started out as an armor bearer. So, if I was sitting here, the Lord said, Sanders, it's time for you to make it to your destiny. <sighs> what? All right. And this is destiny. M my mind, I'm thinking, I'm right here. Right here. Not God. Not the God I serve. Because he'll be like, yeah, I want you to go to your destiny. He'll take you. <clears throat> He'll take you this way and he'll be like, yeah. And then he'll be like, you'll think it's easier to just go this way. But he'll be like, no, I want you to go into the tightest spot you can find. Just to see if, just to see if you're going to be obedient. <clears throat> and, he, and, he, and he got you walking. He got you going. He got you going. And you think, you will think you're on your way to destiny and he'll be like uh-uh uh-uh you ain't ready yet you thought you was ready and then see I can do this because this is my sister and, you know it don't matter nothing about no coronavirus this is my sister come here Sam and then he wants to know if you have to go get somebody else and take them to your destiny that you think you are ready for and he wants to know, will you keep serving him if you have to watch somebody else that you love get what you thought you were supposed to have? And then he says, you can go back and sit down. And he'd be like, but I still want you to follow me. And you have to be willing that wherever God says go, I'm going to go. And I don't care how hard it is. And I don't care how hard I have to sweat. And I don't care how tough it might be, how, how tough it might get. If he said, keep going. Because, you know, when, when Moses brought, the, when Moses brought, excuse me, when God brought the Israelites out of Egypt, they could have been right there in the promised land 60 days, 90 days at the max. They traveled around the wilderness for 400 years. Now, I will say that it, God's sustainability is crazy, man. Because while they was walking, they shoes. They shoes grew with their feet. And as they got and as they got taller, their clothes grew with their height. And you know, they say, what don't kill you just makes you fat. When they got manna from heaven and became a little overweight, their clothes grew with them. That speaks to the, to the sustainability of God. That no matter what you're going through, he'll sustain you while you're in it. But oh no, we can't see his sustaining hand because we ain't, because it's not what we want it to be. And we forget, I didn't have to, he didn't have to wake you up this morning. He helped to start you on your way. He helped to put food.
food on your table. He did that because he loved you. Lord, you got me all over the place now, man. <laughs> man, you got me all over the place now. <laughs> but God, if we're going to, to, to work on self, if we're going to develop this inner man, we have to be faithfully committed, faithfully committed to working out our own salvation. Because in, in salvation, God has already began a work in you. But you still have to work out what he started. And he's told you, he's already told you that he that begins a, a good work, he's going to complete it. But just because he's going to complete it don't mean that there's nothing left for you to do. It doesn't mean that you can, that you can take up some God will do everything type of philosophy about life. And say he got all power. So I just got to sit back. And just wait. No, you don't just get to sit back and just wait. You need to be down on your knees developing your prayer life. You need to be on your knees saying, God, I, I see that you have me in a season of frustration. Where I'm irritated. But why am I here? Is it because I really don't have control of my temper? Is it because I really don't have self-control of mine? Is it because I put the mind over the spirit and not the spirit over the mind? God, 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 I had to sit there at that church as, 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 as they lowered my mother, my father, my loved one down in that casket and they closed that lid and they drove us to that cemetery and they brought us back to that same church to feed us and all I could do was think and see the face of my loved one and I can't, I can't get over it. I can't get over this obstacle. God, why do you still have me here? There's something that you have to work out. And listen, it ain't up to me as the preacher to have out of all of the answers because there is a paradox of the inexplicable. Everything cannot be explained. And if you can explain it, would it really be faith? Because faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things that are not seen. And I can't see it. I can't explain it. I just got to. I just got to trust in it. I can't, I can't be talking about. All right. I mean, how foolish would I look every time I come up to preach and I, I got to do this before I get to sit in the chair? They'd be like, what you doing? I got to make sure it's going to hold me. No, I got faith in the chair that when I sit down, it's just going to, it's going to hold me. And when you go for God, and when you go before God, you have to have faith in Him that He gonna hold you. You have to have faith in God that if you're broken in your heart, and I hear that grief thing, man, I don't know what that is. I don't know who that is, maybe watching, but I hear that grief thing, and that grief thing is serious. And if you don't deal with that demon of grief, it will deal with you. And if, if, if it's staring you in the face, if it's got a hold of you, then let me tell you, you don't have no peace. I'm 31 years old. I ain't got time to be going to getting in my bed and, and not getting no rest. No, I'm trying to get some peace when I go to sleep at night. And there are things, and there might be a habit, there might be an addiction, there might be some grief, there might be some hurt somewhere in your life that is holding you captive. But I come to tell you, give it over to Jesus. That's just good old, that's just good old church. Give it over to Jesus. Let him handle it. Turn it over to the Lord and let him work it out. Because I'll tell you, as long as it's in your hands, As long as it's in your hands. 
Ain't nothing you can do with it. And, I, and I'll close with this. And I told you, I've used this before, but I'll say it again. Because it shouts me when I do it at home. It shouts me. If you take my hands and you put a baseball in my hand, it probably devalues once I take it out of the peg. But if I put it in a professional's hand, probably worth millions of dollars. And if you take a basketball and you put it in my hand, there again, I think a basketball might be $20. If, if you put a basketball in my hand, the moment I open it and take it out of the pack, air it up, it probably devalues once I do all of that. But if I had the capability to put a basketball today in LeBron James' hand or Kobe Bryant's hand or Michael Jordan's hands, man, I, I know if I had it, I'd pay a million dollars for it. I'd pay the million for the basketball based upon whose hands it is in. And let me tell you, if you put nails in my hands, all my hands will do is bleed. But when you take nails and you put them in the hands of Jesus Christ, you get a blood that can wash away sin, guilt, and stain. Doesn't matter about, about my hands. If you can take it out of... Ooh, boy, you better get yourself together. If you can take it out of your hands, if you can realize... There's nothing else I can do with it, so let me take my hands off of it. And the moment you take your hands off of it and you give it over to Jesus, he can speak life where there was death. He can bring a manifestation out of the very issues of your heart if you sow the word of God into it. And so, Bow your heads with me as for a word of prayer. God, our Father, we tell you thank you for this day. We tell you thank you for your word, Lord God. We bless you for who you are. And Lord God, we understand that there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Power that can break every chain, Lord God. There is power in the name of Jesus. And God, I pray for my brother, I pray for my sister today, that wherever they are in their life, that wherever season they find themselves in their lives, I pray right now, today, that you would hold them in the palm of your hand. I pray, God, that as we continue to go on this journey of working on ourselves, of, of making a better us, of wanting to look more like Jesus, not wanting to be more of a Christian, but wanting to look more like Jesus Christ, that we will come to understand that there is a need to work out our salvation. There is a continuation of it. It's not, it's not a class that we're able to graduate from. We're always learning in this class of salvation. So, God, I pray for my brother and my sister that wherever they are, I pray that they will A, accept you, B, believe, and C, confess you. They say, I, 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 you might be just saying, I need to just get closer to him. And you might even want to be a part of a body, a, a body of born again believers. You want to be a part of people that are tired of trying to just do church, that are tired of just trying to look like the church, but want to look like Christ, want to live up to the expectation that God has for us understanding that we are free from condemnation and we cannot walk in righteousness God I pray for my brother I pray for my sister that they be strengthened through whatever it is they're going through and God help us to strengthen ourselves God you've already empowered us so allow us to walk out that empowerment it's in Jesus name we pray amen Amen. Amen. We thank God. We thank God for the word today. We thank God for the word today. Um, yeah, I'll do that. I have to do that. Um, just in case uh, 
you didn't understand me when I was praying because I was praying and doing two things at one time. I was trying to open up doors of the church and pray at the same time. But I want to make sure that you got a clear understanding about what I'm talking about here. And so if you you saying uh, you don't know who Jesus Christ is, and, and I'll even say uh, you can know him and never tap into his power. You can know who he is and never accept him. You can acknowledge him and still not accept him. But you say, I need to know who Jesus Christ is. I really want to get to know him. I want to become more like him. I ask that you would do me a favor and that you would put in the comment section, salvation. If you put salvation in there, I want to let you know somebody will reach out to you. Somebody will be in your inbox. Even if it has to be me myself, I want to make sure that you know who Jesus Christ is. You, you might even be saying, well, listen, I've been watching y'all for a couple weeks now. And it's something about the stone of help that, that, that just keeps drawing me to this page. Just put in there looking for a home. And somebody will reach out to you. There again, hey, it might just be me. So uh, I encourage you, I encourage you that if you don't know who Jesus is, put that salvation in the, in, the, in the comment section. If you're looking for a church home, put I'm looking for a home in the comment section and somebody will be reaching out to you very shortly. Amen. We thank God and we're praying for you. We're praying for your development, for your spiritual development, man, because I want to be more like Jesus Christ. And I pray that you join us next week as we continue to deal with this whole uh, I'm working on me piece because we have to be better just for our community alone we need to be better I see that alone we need to be better for our community but now we have come to the point in our service where it's time for us to give and I am, ex I am grateful I'm happy that God has given me an opportunity to be able to sow into the kingdom of God and I sow not because, uh, not because of what a preacher may say, uh, but because the word of God commands us uh, to literally give the 10% out of every dollar. And I encourage each and every one of you uh, that are part, uh, that are part of the family, that are part of Ebenezer Stone of Hill, to be found faithful and continuously giving into God's house. Because you've heard me say it once, and you'll continue to hear me say it again. If you're if you're found faithful in giving into God's house, that God will be found faithful into giving into your house. And uh, it is always uh, a knowledge of mine that when people that when we give in church and in settings like this it's not just money that we're given but it's a seed that we're trying to sow and when when I sow a seed uh, what are we looking for we're looking for a harvest and so it is necessary that we sow the seed and and you can't just sow it you can't just sow it just to be sowing it and you can't sow it grudgingly you have to freely give this thing over to God and you freely give it over to God and you watch how God will bless you tremendously. Amen? Amen. If you would, bow your heads with me for a word of prayer as we pray for our offering. Uh, God, our Father, we tell you thank you for your grace and your mercy. We tell you thank you for your gifts as well as your givers. God, we pray uh, that you will begin to open up the windows of heaven and pour us our blessings that we don't have room to receive. God, my prayer is that no house, and I speak this over the entire Ebenezer family, that no house go lacking because they have given to your house. But Lord God, my prayer is that you will open up those windows of heaven and you will pour us out blessings, blessings, blessings that we don't have room enough to receive. It's by the will and it's by the faith that we receive these blessings. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. These are your morning announcements. Just a reminder that in-person services have been canceled until further notice. So please be sure to join us online Sunday, 11 a.m. on Facebook, YouTube, and our website. We are canceling warrior study for the months of May and June. We are planning to hold warrior study outside during the summer months beginning the second Wednesday in July. Weather permitting, we will hold our first outdoor service on Sunday, June 6th. Please mark your calendar. Join the men's room virtually. Our information will be coming in the next few weeks. 
the second and fourth Tuesdays of each month. The next program will be held Tuesday, May 9th at 7 p.m. with Deacon Nick Walker. Be sure to check your email and read your text from the bishop for additional information and updates on these and other announcements. The Pastor's Aid Council will hold a meet and greet with Pastor Yvonne Lewis on Saturday, May 15th from 11, excuse me, from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. We would like to wish each mother a happy Mother's Day. For those of you who mother is no longer with us, we pray her love and light live on forever. May God's peace be with you. Amen. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth, now, and forevermore. And the church says, Amen. Ebenezer family and friends, we know you enjoyed that worship experience. For the last 18 weeks, we have been praying corporately, and now it is time to walk into your new life. Thank you so much for joining us today. As you know, Ebenezer has mighty men of valor here to support Bishop in his vision to go and sin no more. God bless you and see you again next week.